So, you've just gotten space engineers, but you've discovered that designing ships isn't as easy as it first appeared. In fact, all the ships you've been designing look like bricks. Well, the Skyke is anything but a brick, and that's why I'm going to be using it to teach you how to build your very first ship. Starting off in Space Engineers, it can be pretty overwhelming, and you can hardly be blamed, because, to be honest, there are a lot of different components to use, and if you're a new player, you may not know which ones are needed to make your ship go. So let's take a look at the Skyke as an example to start learning from, and then we'll go on to build our own little ship. So why did I choose the Skyke, you might ask? Well, it's not just because it's beautiful. I chose it because it is a ship that can do a lot of things in a small package. As a new player, you're going to want to do a lot of things, but one of them is to travel from the surface of a planet and into space. And that's what the Skyke can do. You see, in its small stock package, it can travel from the surface of a planet to space under relatively little resource. And that's because it's a small ship and employs very few components. So that's why it's being used as a baseline for this tutorial. So in order to help you understand this a bit more clearly, I've cut the Skyke in half so that you can see how each component connects to one another. So the very first thing you're going to need to know about when you're building your first ship is the landing gear. It's the first thing you're going to use to build one. In order to place a landing gear, simply select it off of your hotbar, find a place suitable on the ground, click it, it will drop and lock. That's all you need. After that, you can start placing blocks. But the first block you're going to place after that is the cockpit. On the Skyke, I've employed the fighter cockpit, and there are two types of cockpit you can employ with varying uses. The fighter cockpit is more expensive, but it's better looking in my opinion, and suits fighter aircraft, stuff that can travel through atmosphere from the surface of a planet to space. But you don't need it. There's no aerodynamics in the stock version of Space Engineers, so you could very well employ the basic cockpit, which is far more suitable for working ships, and in addition to that, it has a better field of vision. If I place one down here and hop inside of it, you'll see that I can look around and get a pretty good view of my surroundings. This is not the case with the fighter cockpit, and that's why using it for construction may be somewhat difficult. In addition, it's larger and requires more resources. But let's move on. Next thing you're going to have to worry about is your powerhouse. What are you using to make the thing go? Well, I'm using a large, small ship reactor that employs uranium, and that's a resource that's hard to come by. So that may not be the very first component that you use. There are other components that you could use for energy supply. Those are batteries, as well as solar panels. The solar panels I have on this station are large solar panels, and they look pretty much very similar for small ships. So let's grab out one of those by searching solar panel in the G menu, dragging it down to the hotbar, and dropping it on the ship. <laughs> As you can see, they are fairly large. They take up a lot of space, and sadly, they don't produce a lot of energy. So they're not really a great idea for ships in space. They're more of a station type thing that you would like to use. So what do we have left over then? Well, we've got batteries. By searching batteries in the G menu, you'll see a battery there, and you can drop that, drag that on down, and place one on your ship. Now, by itself, it won't do anything. Batteries are storage units. They require a supply of energy. You can subsidize that by using a small reactor, which is much more fuel efficient, and let it charge for a period of time, or hook it up to a station via connector, which we'll go into later. So those are the three ways that you can use to get energy to your ship. Again, mine is using a large reactor which utilizes uranium, a rare resource. So you may want to consider using batteries and connectors as alternatives. Now let's talk about the next component you're going to need to construct a ship. Gyroscopes. Now for my ship, I've employed two. This helps me turn much more quickly and requires a bit more energy. But you really don't need that many. Gyroscopes are highly dependent on the mass of your ship. So if your ship is larger and heavier, you're going to need more to turn just as quickly. But if your ship's small and light like mine, one to two probably will suffice. Next, we want to talk about how this ship communicates with others as well as connects with your suit. So you're going to need an antenna. I place my antenna at the front of my ship, but these things can be placed anywhere on the ship and they are not dependent on direction. 
but they are required, in my opinion, for building a good ship. After you've placed your antenna, you're going to want to look for a container. Containers are a great way to store things, say components you're bringing from one site to another, storing fuel in or storing ammo for your weapons. We'll go more into that later. Next we have the oxygen tank. This is a component that is exclusive for ships that are going to be traveling into space. If you're not traveling into space, you can easily just place a vent by searching vent in the G menu, dragging it down to your hotbar, and placing it onto one of the ports of your cockpit. By itself, it won't draw any oxygen, so you'll need to go into your cockpit, hit K, find the vent, then go down to depressurize, and hit OK. This is going to enable that vent to suck in oxygen into your cockpit. This way, you now have a healthy supply of lung-filling oxygen and you will not suffocate. That's a good thing to have. This, however, will not work very well in space, seeing as how there is no oxygen in space. And that's why we need the oxygen tank. Oxygen tanks need to be hooked up via conveyor in order to work, which we'll go into later. But let's move on to the next required component for your ship. Weapons. These are good things to have, especially when you're fighting pirates or other players. There are three types of weapons you can utilize in Space Engineers at the moment. You've got the Gatling Cannon, which has connectors on either side to refuel or to reload the weapon. You've got reloadable rocket pods, which require a large conveyor connection, but not a large container, which is what I'm using here, actually a medium container. And the non-reloadable rocket pods, which must be reloaded manually. Now, these are a great space-saving weapon. However, as I've said, they cannot be reloaded mid-flight. So once you've depleted your supply, you are SOL, or crap out of luck. <laughs> that didn't really work very well, did it? So now you've got your first ship all put together, like here. I've got a test ship put together, which we'll use in this tutorial. But let's first go back to the Skyke as our example and see how it's employing the conveyor system. As you can see, all this black and yellow piping is connected everywhere about the ship, connecting to the hydrogen tank, connecting to the Gatling gun, connecting to the reactor and to the oxygen tank, as well as connector. This is crucial in order to supply your weapons with ammunition, to supply your cockpit with oxygen, and to supply your hydrogen tank with additional fuel when it's time to reload. So, how do we connect everything up? Well, first you need to know something about small connectors for small ships. There are two different kinds. We have large conveyors, which convey large components such as rockets and steel plates. But I am using small conveyors, which are unique to small ships. These still carry things like oxygen, hydrogen, and fuel for your reactor. In order to save space and resources, I've used all small conveyors on my ship. That's not something you need to do for your ship, but it's something that I think helps the ship kind of cut down on basically weight and scale. So now let's go over to the test bed that I put together to demonstrate how this is done. You'll notice that on every component we have a series of different types of connection points, which are indicated by yellow boxes. On the Gatling guns, you'll see there's one on both the top and bottom, or depending on how you're looking at sides. The reactors, small reactors, only have one. The cockpit, this one that I'm using here, has two. And this oxygen tank has two on the top, and one large one on the bottom. Now we've got to connect this up. So, in order to do this, press G. So to find it quickly, simply search conveyor, find the one with a plus symbol above it, drag it down to your hotbar, and now you're ready to go. With that selected, use the scroll button to go through the different types of connectors. This will speed up the process. So first things first, let's get that reactor connected up with your cockpit. This is not necessary, but you want to make sure everything's connected up together. So I'm going to put a junction box there. Now we've got the cockpit connected with the reactor. Now let's put a conveyor between the Gatling gun to the junction box we created for both the reactor and the cockpit. So I'm going to do a little elbow here and a little elbow there using the insert, home, page up, delete, and, and page down key to rotate the blocks as I go. You'll also notice there's a red line. This is reflection mode. This can be accomplished by pressing M on the ship you're building, finding a place you want to line it up with, and then just simply hitting left mouse button. That will select your plane. After you've selected the location, just hit N, and then you're ready to go. N toggles the mode on or off. Remember that when you're doing this, <laughs> if you want to make changes on one side, hit that N key and turn that off. But let's get back to conveying everything up. You'll notice that the this conveyor has turned green. That means the connection is good, and we can proceed. 
Also, I've noticed that I don't have any storage units on this. So I'm gonna go into my G menu, find containers, drag down, say a small container and plop that down on my ship. Now I can have some way to refuel my weapons. Now let's connect up the oxygen tank to the rest of the ship. Now this is accomplished pretty simply. The method I often like to favor is to find a large connection on my ship and place a connector. This allows me to convert a large connector to a small connector and save a little bit of space if I want to reduce the profile of the ship. So let's go and find the connector in the G menu by searching connector in the search bar. Drag that down to the bar and place that on that large conveyor port. There we go. Now we've got some small ports on the side. This will allow us to tra transfer oxygen through that large port into these small ports and then where we need it to go. So now I'm gonna connect that up. Excellent, now we've got the container conveyored up, but we still need to connect it to the rest of the system. So let's put one more elbow here on top of the junction box, which connects up to the front of the cockpit and one on top of the container. And there we have it. Everything is piped up and green. Don't worry about it passing through some components. This is possible and is a suggested way of reducing the amount of conveyors you need. As a side note for you new players, that connector on the bottom is vital to charging up your battery powered ship, as well as adding and refueling your oxygen and hydrogen supply. This reduces the requirement of having your own oxygen generator or hydrogen generator on your ship. I pretty much always do this to reduce the profile of my ship and reduce the amount of components I need to add. And there we have it. All the vital components of the ship have been assembled. And now it's time to move on to the good part. The bit that makes your ship actually fly? Thrusters. Now let's take a look at the Skyke, seeing as how it is an interplanetary ship. You'll notice that there are three different types of thrusters on the ship. We've got ion thrusters, which are indicated easily by the blue thrust that comes out of it. We have turbines, which are the atmospheric thrusters and only work in atmosphere, as well as the hydrogen fueled rockets, which are lit up in yellow and work in all conditions atmosphere, and in space. The most thrust is produced by the hydrogen thrusters. Ions work great in space, but produce no thrust on the ground, and atmospheric thrusters work best in atmosphere, produce the most thrust, and are the most efficient in that area. So for my ship, I've employed all three, so that in each situation, I can employ the correct type of propulsion and save on energy. The one thing though about the hydrogen fueled rockets you'll need to know is that they do require a fuel supply and in space engineers without mods that requires this fuel tank. As you can see it is pretty big and if you're trying to make a compact ship it may be difficult. So let's place one of those hydrogen tanks on our test bed by searching for hydrogen, dragging the hydrogen tank down onto the bar, dragging the hydrogen thrusters with the plus mark down onto the bar and now we're ready to go. Now I'll place one of these hydrogen tanks and there we have it. We've got a hydrogen tank on our ship and that gives us the ability to do this, to place on a large hydrogen thruster. Now it'll work just fine like this in creative, but in survival, you'll need to refuel this tank. And the only way to do that is to connect it up with a connector and have it refueled by a generator. So let's connect up this new hydrogen tank with the rest of the ship using small conveyors, which is perfectly acceptable for this sort of setup. I'm going to drag out a line by holding the control button all the way over to here. Delete this block here and replace it with a junction. And there we go. We now have hydrogen flowing from the connector and to the connector, and we can refuel through that said connector. Now the ship isn't looking too great, but that's because we're looking at the bare bones components of the ship. And what comes next, are the rest of the thrusters. In Space Engineers, you need thrusters in every direction, X, Y, and Z in both sides. So this thruster on the back will only propel me forward and will not stop me from hitting the ground. So since we're on a planet's surface, let's first start with placing atmospheric thrusters. If you're building a ship only for atmosphere, you'll only need these thrusters. 
Also note that there are two different types of thrusters, and by using the scroll wheel, you can toggle between the large atmospheric thruster and the small one. I'm going to start by placing them in the vertical position. Next, I'm going to place some in the rear-facing direction. That way, I have a way to move forward on my ship. You can place them anywhere on the ship. Just be sure that the exhaust port is not running into any adjacent blocks. Next, unless you enjoy high-speed collisions with cliff faces, we're going to have to place some in the reverse direction, allowing us to stop the ship. You can use a method called flip and burn, where you use the rear thrusters by flipping over, but this technique is not suggested in atmosphere, unless you enjoy destroying the ship you spent hours creating. All right, next on the line of things we need to do, we need to find a place to place the horizontal thrust, the left-right. This is going to allow us to strafe and stop us from floating sideways. Yes, this is a problem that does happen in space engineers, and that's why you need thrusters in every direction. Sometimes though, in construction, you'll find that you don't have good mount points. Here, I can't connect it to the elbow, and I really want to place it there, so I replace that elbow with a junction box, and that gives me an excellent mount point. You don't really need a lot in this direction, but I usually like to stick with three, and that gives me a lot better handling. Now, for atmospheric ships, it isn't entirely necessary that you have a thruster facing upward, because the ship is going to be basically level all the time. However, you do want to pay attention if you flip the thing over, because you will not be able to flip it back. Alright, so now we have a hydrogen boost thruster, which will get us into space. And we have some atmospheric thrusters, which will allow us to fly around in atmosphere. But we're going to need some ion thrusters, which I found here in the G menu, and that's going to allow us to efficiently fly around space. Now, hydrogen can be utilized in space for navigation. However, you will not be able to turn or stop, and that's what these ion thrusters are for. So just like we did in the atmospheric thrusters, we're going to have to add them in every direction. Please note, though, that ion thrusters are pretty weak, so you may need a few more if you want your ship to handle well in space. I'm not so concerned with this, with this ship or the Skyke, because it's mostly an atmospheric ship, so I'm not going to place a ton. But if you want to give yourself a little bit more oomph, you can use large versions of the ion thrusters, which will give you a lot more oomph, but at a cost of additional energy. Here you can see that I've once again had to replace some of the conveyors to give me more mount points, but this isn't a problem. Those junction boxes do cost a little bit more, but they do allow for me to mount things to the sides of conveyors. All right, now it's time to give myself some forward power, and in this case, I am going to employ the large thrusters. It's something that you can do, but remember that these aren't going to work in atmosphere. Even though they do produce a lot of thrust, generally speaking, they're really only for space. After you're done, make sure to go over your ship and make sure that you have thrusters facing in all directions. Looks like this ship is pretty good, and this thing is probably ready to take off. So let's take this test bed for a nice little flight. So I'm going to hop in my cockpit by pressing F. I'm going to Unlock myself by pressing P from the landing gear, and we're good to go. Ooh, looks like I'm overloading. This is something that you may end up seeing when you put too many thrusters on a ship, and it's something you're going to have to balance. All that means is that I need either more batteries or an additional power supply. So I'm going to find batteries in my, my G menu. Drag that down onto the bar, and find a comfortable spot to place an additional battery. I'll place one right there. Oh, looks like it's in the way of a thruster. Let's get rid of that thruster. All right, I've made the necessary adjustments, and it looks like we're ready to test this thing out. So, here we go. Ooh, that's a little bit more acceleration than I was anticipating, but hey, it's exactly what we need to get into space. All right, looks like we've got our test pad ready to go. Now it's time to do the design. Oh, God, this thing is hideous. All right, uh, what do we need to get this thing started? All right, let's start making this front end look better. All right, that's looking moderately better. And I think it needs a, something a little bit on the top there, and it's getting pretty close to done. All right, let's figure something out up here. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now it's time to apply a little bit of paint to make this thing look better. So I'll hit P, select a color, and then use the middle mouse button to actually paint onto the ship do some stripes or something like that. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, this ship isn't really that attractive. And I would agree, it's definitely not a ship that I myself would call done. It would probably go through several iterations, 10, 15, 20, as many as it took. 
to get my desired look. The Skike that I used in this video was a ship that I spent many hours on, and probably went through 15 to 20 iterations with, and that's something you should keep in mind when you're designing your first ship. Don't get discouraged because the ship that you've created isn't as good as everybody else's at first. That's probably because you need to spend a bit more time making different versions of it. If you do it this way, eventually you'll arrive at a ship that does meet with your expectations for aesthetic quality. But that, my friends, will have to be left for a whole other video. So if you'd like to see a video on how I design ships and what my creative process is, please let me know in the comment section of the video. Alternatively, you could ask me in person by going over to our new Discord community, which is in the information section of this video. There you can meet me, Wasted Space, or even Shaq of the XP Gamers in our weekly community events, as well as connect with other members of the community. I am usually on there a lot, as people there will probably tell you, and it is a lot of fun, so I highly suggest you go check that out. So if you like the video, if you like the content, and if you'd like to see more, be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.